Chris Coral of Burksville, Kentucky, discovered a whole new world when he took his close-up camera into his backyard. After years of shooting and editing, he's produced a documentary on garden insects. Let's take a look. We live in the natural world, and if we look at a typical field, what we see is we see a field. And, you know, we may see a pasture and think, well, that's a good pasture for animals, or we may see good farmland, or we may just see a vacant lot. But what we're, we never really see is that there's billions and billions of microorganisms in the soil. There's fungi. There's all this insect life, there's wild birds that are, are spreading their manure that's fertilizing, there's deer and there's all of these other things. It's, it's this incredible holistic system that works in complete harmony. There's no hierarchy, there's, there's nothing that resembles the way we are in our society as far as, you know, certain people are more important than others. There's, there's none of that in nature. Everything just works in a complete harmony. And when things get out of harmony, it just naturally finds a new balance. Insects to me is the, the, perfect, the perfect subject for our society. Um, we're so disconnected from nature and the way that nature works and, and how important it is in our life. Um, and bugs take the brunt of it. Everybody, nobody really loves bugs. Most people think about bugs as something that they want out of their life. And, but they're such an integral part of this natural world that keeps a balance that keeps us alive essentially and so I wanted to portray the aspect that bugs aren't bad they're not good they're just a necessary part of the world that we live in and if we can have a little bit of respect for bugs that we don't have any respect for essentially you know how is that going to relate to how much we respect each other and how much we respect you know, the abundance in our life and, and everything. In the past, I used to photograph to be a photographer. And now I photograph to support my beliefs and what I want to, what I want to express. So it's a completely different aspect. Now with certain close-up filters, I can, I can pull up in this close to, to something. The other real difficult aspect about filming at these magnifications is that you may see a bug and then you turn your camera to it and you can't find them through the camera because you're, you're moving it around and you've got such a tiny area. And sometimes by the time you fo actually find it and focus on it, the bug will be gone or move to a different spot and you'll have to move the camera because you've got a very narrow range of focus. You only can focus in about this much area. So you've got to move the camera back and forth to be able to get it in focus when you're that close. If you really want to want to see what I did mostly during this project, it was this. Just waiting. Just waiting. I'd have to sit out here sometimes for hours knowing that something was going on, but just waiting for it to happen. You know, you look at, at ants that 
that have an incredibly complex society and they're able to, to take care of natural disasters that happen within their society with no, almost no effort at all. They just go in and, and start working and, and totally move their nest where, you know, we have something like Katrina and we have a hard time. So there's so much that, that nature just naturally teaches us if we just pay attention. One of the things that has been really joyful about the, the marketing aspect of it is I really, I really just thought I was making a, a, a film for gardeners, for gardeners to understand what's happening in their gardener, garden more. And I come to find out that my, my real audience is children, that children love it. I've had several people say that their kids watch it over and over again. Uh, a, fairly large percentage of the sales so far have been to teachers that want to show it to their kids, so that's very gratifying. My whole impetus for doing it was so that when somebody walks out to their garden, they are more aware of what's going on, not just whether their plants are doing well or not, or whether they have bug problems or not, but just so that they have an appreciation for the whole process that the garden has to go through to produce that food for us. Um, that's really, that was really my, my goal. And that's it for another episode of Kentucky Farm Bureau's Bluegrass and Backroads. If you have a story idea or just want to let us know what you think of the show, send us an email to bluegrassandbackroads at kyfb.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.